The phrase the male gaze was first coined by filmmaker and theorist Laura Mulvey in her seminal 1973 paper, Visual Pleasure in Narrative Cinema. Mulvey wrote that determining male gaze projects its fantasy onto the female figure, which is styled accordingly. In the traditional exhibitionist role, women are simultaneously looked at and displayed with their appearance coded for strong visual and erotic impact. Throughout time, society has used the male gaze to exploit young women in films, whether the characters or the actual actresses. We watch as Ophelia in William Shakespeare's Hamlet drown herself because of her being silenced by everyone in her life, and her death showed how harmful silencing one based off their gender can be. Her suicide is known to have impacted the story minimally because she was an underdeveloped character and was only used as a plot device to further Hamlet's development and character arc. She was deemed the most useless character with the most beautiful suicide in literature. In Sofia Coppola's film adaptation of The Virgin Suicides from 1999, we are shown the perspective of teenage boys as they watch and interact with the five Lisbon sisters. These boys have developed infatuations with the girl next door because the sisters presented themselves as obedient young women. They were so enthralled by these girls that even 20 years later, they speak of them and what happened to them at reunions. As teenagers, we tried to put the pieces together. We still can't. Now, whenever we run into each other at business lunches or cocktail parties, we find ourselves in the corner going over the evidence one more time. All to understand those five girls who after all these years, we can't get out of our minds. As the film progresses, we watch as the sisters are used and molded to become the perfect girl by their parents, the four boys, and their love interest throughout the film. We can see this especially after the youngest sister commits suicide and they restrict the girls from going anywhere but school and back home for fear of them taking their own lives and judgment from the town. What are you doing here, honey? You're not even old enough to know how bad life gets. Obviously, doctor. You've never been a 13-year-old girl. In the docu-series Pretty Baby, a documentary focused on the sexualization of the actress Brooke Shields, we see how harmful the male gaze is on young women. Brooke Shields was 11 years old when she acted in the movie Pretty Baby. When she was 14, she was cast in the movie The Blue Lagoon. We see similar sexual themes where she has performed outright and implied sexual acts that were seen as innocent because Brooke Shields and her co-star were both cast as children. Four decades later, Brooke Shields is still harassed for being sexual in those movies, even though she was just a child, not even old enough to drive a car. Some feminists say his commercials are an outrage. They're seductive. No ambivalence on your part about using very young teenagers. So I'm a bad boy. What do you want? You have to ask the adults why they made the decision to use a child to do that. The sexualization of actors has also impacted people many years after the production of their films. Other than Brooke Shields, the most recent example of this is Paramount being sued by the stars of the 1968 Romeo and Juliet directed by Franco Zeffirelli over child abuse. Olivia Husey and Leonard Whiting played Romeo and Juliet in this film where there were scenes of them nude, although Zeffirelli promised there would be no nudity. These actors are now in their 70s suing Paramount for sexually exploiting them and distributing nude images of adolescent children. The director believed at the time that these scenes were needed or the picture would fail. This is one of just many examples of how media has led people to believe that sex appeal is the only way things are going to be successful. There are other things in films that have hinted at this as well. If you've watched Big Bang Theory, Grease, or Daisy and Fuse, you have seen this, whether in the way characters behave, what they wear, or the things they say. That's what I love about these high school girls, man. I get older, they stay the same age. <laughs> we can see how the sexualization of young girls is harmful through interviews with Brooke Shields and any of her friends or co-stars. Yet in The Virgin Suicides, the narrators of the story can't seem to understand that the girls were being inherently sexualized. We can especially see this when the sisters and the narrators are split off after a school dance. Will you call me? Uh, absolutely. We can see Lex Lisbon as a sister who is consistently sexualized throughout this scene because the boys don't see a problem with her being used for just her body. Even though all the sisters ever wanted was to be loved because their parents never showed them the affection they wanted or needed. In D.W. Anselmo's article, Pretty Girls Make Graves, How Female Suicide Became a Cultural Obsession, Anselmo writes, In their secondary opaqueness, the sisters lose both their voices and their interventive power in their own fates. They are ghost girls without a bite, both their lives and their deaths conjured by men. After the girls are pulled from school and forced to stay home because of Lex getting home late from the dance, we watch as each sister commits suicide within their family's home. 
In the same article, Anselmo writes, the already implicit connection between failing and falling, which fastens female identity to self-destruction, suggests that suicide often stems from women's inability to fulfill her expected societal roles. We especially see this when Lux comes home late from prom. Their mother, Mrs. Lisbon, punishes the girls because they didn't reach her high expectations. We notice in the same scene that Mr. Lisbon is more worried about what happened to Lux while her mother begins yelling at her for coming home late. After this incident, we watch as each sister commits suicide within their family's home. Each of their deaths symbolized many historical deaths of women. In the 1940s, white females who jumped off of buildings became a cultural obsession. There are two photos of women jumping off buildings, Mary Miller in 1942 and Evelyn McHale in 1947, that have been referenced and used in art exhibits all across the nation, even though they're technically crime scene photos. Ben Cosgrove crowned McHale's suicide as the most beautiful suicide. Along with this, Sylvia Plath was a large inspiration for both the book and the film as they referenced her own suicide and her mental health spiraling out of control within the virgin suicides. Another perspective of the male gaze is how men make women suicides about themselves. In the book-to-screen adaptation of 13 Reasons Why, originally written by Jay Asher and developed for Netflix by Brian Yorkey, we watch as Del Monet's character Clay Jensen explores one of his classmates and romantic interest Catherine Lankford's character Hannah's suicide. As we see Clay listen to the cassette tapes Hannah had mailed to everyone, we watch as Clay tries putting the pieces together as to what he did wrong, not why she committed suicide. Clay was investigating each person on the tapes and interrogated them on their relationship with Hannah. He was made the main character of the story and Hannah was used to drive the plot and development in the story, similar to how Ophelia was used in Hamlet. For the majority of the show, we see Clay try to understand why Hannah killed herself. He believed she was perfect and everything was fine in her life, similar to what the boys thought of the Lisbon sisters in the virgin suicides. But this perspective men have of women just exposes how much men only focus on women's physical appearance or shallow personalities they put on, rather than taking into consideration what else could be going on in their lives. As Bud Bodiger has put it, what counts is what the heroine provokes, or rather what she represents. She is the one, or rather the love or fear she inspires in the hero, or else the concern he feels for her, who makes him act the way he does. In herself, the woman has riot the slightest importance. This was very prominent in 13 Reasons Why, because without Hannah's death, there would be no story to tell. The male gaze has been ingrained into our society for so long that it has become normalized for people to see women as being shallow or having no problems in their lives. We see this in films like The Virgin Suicides and in actors' real lives like Brooke Shields. The Virgin Suicides was a film we chose to represent how harmful the male gaze is, not only because of the treatment these girls got from the boys, but because of the pressure they received from their mother who was forcing the traditional women's roles onto them. We watch how each of the girls deals with being forced into being the ideal young lady. Lux is rebellious and was shown holding a cigarette as she died to symbolize her rebellion, whereas Teresa is quiet and did not want to draw too much attention to herself, so she took sleeping pills. The film is told from the boys' perspective, but the director of the film, Coppola, wanted the audience to see through it and see each girl for who they were, not for what they were molded into. In the article by Megan Abbott for Criterion, she writes about the ending of the film. The film's closing moments show the boys, months after the suicides, standing across the street from the now-empty Lisbon house, as the voiceover bemoans, Only that we had loved them, and that they hadn't heard us calling still do not hear us calling them out of those rooms where they went to be alone for all time. As we hear these words, Coppola's camera shifts from matching shots of the watching boys and the house to a sidelong view of the boys alone, their gazes directed off screen. You're focusing on the wrong thing, she seems to be telling them, telling us. Look here instead. The camera then diverts our gaze away to show us what the boys are failing to see, to understand. This isn't their story, it's the Lisbons. 